everybody welcome to another video um, if you were to ask me I, uh, what sort of trees would you avoid in bonsai um, well I've always said that if you're a beginner don't try anything as fancy schmancy as a Japanese maple they're not good for beginners they're a bit too fussy and uh, I think I would have said to you I haven't really got many Japanese maples but actually I've noticed my channel's filling up with Japanese maples just at the moment although that'll change I've got lots of other trees so um, I'm gonna but today I'm just gonna be doing some trimming work on these this group that I've grouped together into one set of videos for the time being they're gradually going to uh, sort of split out into their own separate ways as each tree needs more work done to it individually uh, but for the moment they're just I'm just gonna work them on the work on them as a group a group of trees and uh, keep them in one playlist and then eventually each tree will as they say branch out into its own branch out pun intended um, will branch out into its own uh, playlist and uh, so yeah let's start with this one this one is Taylor a uh, Japanese maple called Taylor I think I paid £3.99 for it from a well-known supermarket that rhymes with UNESCO's and uh, it's in this pretty little cream pot which is grubby but and needs a clean so let me get a cloth and we'll do that uh, as I say I believe this tree is um, it's called Taylor and uh, it's a variegated species with pinks and greens and creams clean up this pot a little I'm not repotting any of these trees they've only um, spent a year or so in this pot well all of them spent a year or so in the pot uh, I am going to top dress them and add some uh, fresh compost on the top maybe just some gravel uh, and some controlled release fertilizer but what I want to do in the main is cut back um, just some of these shoots where I've got um, two, three, four, four sets of buds um, I just want to promote a little bit more ramification and in some places yeah, we have four or five branches emanating from the same point on the tree which uh, is not good not ideal you're just going to get a sort of knuckle there so I'm just going around I'm just setting it up for spring really I want to get it chopped back a bit before the sap starts flowing Japanese maples have a tendency to bleed a lot if they're cut back when the sap is flowing they also have a tendency to die back if you chop too close to a set of buds they'll die back past the buds so always leave a bit of a stub that can then be taken off later um, I'm going to take off this thicker piece in favour of this thinner horizontal piece but I'm still going to take it back slightly um, I want to keep it at this kind of height and just build a canopy so it's more or less going to be a broom style tree um, so yeah so it's just a question of going around um, where I've got a dead piece that can come off don't like that piece at all which is going in the wrong direction um, and where I've got two shoots crossing each other like so um, I'm going to take out the one that's most in the way really and I've got two pieces coming out of the same piece here and I've also got a kind of a T branch just in there uh, just here which I don't like I'm going to remove that because I have a branch there um, I'm actually going to remove that shorten that 
Okay. Another branch crossing there. And a dead piece. Okay, so that might seem a little drastic, but um, I think that'll get it set up. We'll get some back budding, hopefully. And the tree will begin to fill out over the next couple of years. Okay, so here's the first of two uh, Orange Dream Japanese maples. Again, these were bought as 3 99 trees from that well-known supermarket. And uh, again, all I'm going to be doing is shortening back some of these pieces that are going in the wrong direction or have grown a bit leggy or I have too many pieces coming in one spot and I want to shorten this down just a little bit so I'm going to take out that center there um, and remove that making this my new apex so I'm actually quite pleased with this tree, it's done quite well, but I've still got a couple of places that pieces are coming out in the wrong spot. Um, so just, as I say, shorten back some of these pieces. And I think like this, that's crossing, can go... Yeah. No, I'm quite pleased with that. I don't think that needs an awful lot more work done to it. Um, there's a piece there that could come out, and that's better. We've also got um, a bit of a, a cluster of branches here, so I'm going to take out this one. And I'm going to take out uh, this one. And that's better. That should prevent any unsightly bulges just there. Quick 360 on that one. Okay. Here we have the second orange dream. Uh, this one, again, it was 399 from that supermarket. Uh, and this is my front, but it has a lot more boring straight branches than the other one. So I'm going to shorten some of these back quite considerably. Um, in the hope that it will then shoot out some more and give me a more interesting ramification with more movement and less of these terrible straight pieces with um, two or three branches all emanating from the same point. I'm going to shorten that right back. Shorten that right back. I like having this piece at the back but again it's quite boring. I'm going to cut it back to there. And then these two pieces are kind of interfering with one with the other. So I'm going to put a piece of wire on those. Okay, so these are fairly stiff, all being thin um, branches. So I'm going to use a fairly thick piece of wire. Um, again, I find thick wire doesn't cut in as quickly as fine wire. And I know I've said this before. You may not have seen that video. I think that's got something to do with the difference between a, a sharp blade will cut quicker and better than a, a blunt one. So if you think of a thin edge or a thin piece of wire as a fine edge of a sharp blade and a thick piece of wire as the um, dull edge of a blunt blade, that's my theory. And I may be completely wrong and if you know better and can tell me let me know in the comments. Let's take out that branch that's kind of in the way there. I'll move you in a little bit closer. So hopefully you can see what I'm doing. I'm using the one piece of wire to wire 
two branches like so not too tightly and hopefully without knocking off too many buds and then I can bring this branch around and away from one another a little more I put in some movement so they're not sort of crisscrossing each other and generally being in the way of each other that's better okay yeah now I'm happy with that I'm going to remove that piece that's now sticking up and shorten that in favour of that In fact, now I'm going to take that chunk out entirely. That's better. Yeah, no, I like that. Okay, so... The tree now seems unbalanced in the pot. Because... I have shortened this branch um, and I do want it to fill out more and, and this branch has come down lower so but because the trunk is sweeping in that direction I think as this begins to fill in uh, it'll be better I'm going to shorten that and I'm going to take out that piece as I say but doing it this time of year um, there's less chance of a you know, disastrous bleed and Japanese maples can bleed badly if they're cut at the wrong time of year. So there we go. I'll give you a quick twirl of that one. This again, 399, is emerald lace. This is one of the lace-leaved maples and it really hasn't got you know, a huge amount going from, on for it at the moment. I'm going to... I've got a couple of tea bar arrangements here. And I think these branches are too low anyway, so I'm going to remove those. And then I'm just going to shorten everything back to just above a set of buds quite drastically um, I'm hoping that the tree will respond not um, well will respond well not badly from this it was a strongly growing quite healthy tree but it, it shot out a lot of dead straight material You know, got some ugly stuff going on. So, I haven't really got a front for this tree. If it's probably this is the closest to a front, but I've got one, two, three, four, five shoots all coming out to once from this point, and another T bar, three, um, in fact, three branches coming from there. I'm going to remove that one. That one, that one, and indeed that one, and then I'm going to hope that this tree responds well to this fairly drastic chop, um, by throwing out lots of new buds. Another quick twirl around. Do you know I've just been absolutely no I've got that absolutely wrong. That is not the Japan the emerald lace. Uh, reading my own handwriting upside down. This is one I've grown from seed that had a superb red colour. So anyway, everything else I stood stands for um, stands it grew in all the wrong directions and shot out long straight growth but it did have an absolutely superb red autumn colour which is why I chose it 
to be um, from a batch of seedlings to work on into more of a tree. So yeah, not emerald lace, grown from seed. This is emerald lace, as the label says. And again, as I recalled, it did have lots of shoots all from the same point. A um, bit of a graft here. But it's not terribly ugly. And it has the most delicate leaves, which I really liked. So I'm just going to start removing some of these branches where I have several branches growing out in the same direction. Um, maybe shorten back the top. Get rid of that. And four branches coming there. Okay. A little bit drastic again, but I think it'll survive. It's not. I'm not going to touch the roots, so hopefully it will just take off as the weather um, and light improves as the year goes on and we hit spring. It's an interesting movement, um, but little else going for it in terms of branching at the moment. Hopefully, it'll make a you know make up and do something nice this year. We can have everything all at once. Okay, so I've got my trusty little tray to contain the mess and my trusty little nylon brush. And I'm going to scrape away some of the top layer of soil without hopefully disturbing it too much. And then I can give a generous sprinkling of continuous release fertilizer like so and then I'm going to overtop that with some uh, regular potting grit which I hope will stop some of the weeds looks nice it kind of stops some you know a build up of moss which I really don't like just aesthetically it's not a um, yeah. I don't think having moss on your trees is bad it just I don't like it um, that's that really so I'm going to do that with all these trees and hopefully as I say that sets them up to get away nicely in the spring more videos to come in the summer with them Thank you so much for watching. It really is appreciated. Please, please, please look after yourselves. Stay safe.